Hey everybody, welcome to the Supercross Virtual Press Conference, the 250 East Coast Division. Four rounds into the 2020 Supercross Championship, we got Chase Sexton, Shane McElrath, RJ Hampshire, top three in points in the 250 East, joining me for this roundtable style press conference hangout, maybe guys? How you doing? I mean, it's been a month now since I've seen you all. Everybody doing okay? Yeah, doing pretty good. It's uh, it's weird to see you on uh, on FaceTime. Feel like we're really getting to know each other a lot better, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a weird time. Chase, RJ, you guys doing all right? Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. Uh, just here home in uh, Florida, and man, just kind of accepting the new. Um, yeah, for me, I've just been kind of hanging out and um, doing a little bit of uh, golfing and um, just hanging out with some uh, some of my family. So it's been pretty chill, just trying to find something to keep me busy. It's been uh, hard not to be able to go and see my friends, stuff like that. So just, uh, yeah, trying to do some stuff that I normally don't get to do. RJ, I want to start with you. Um, right now is a very confusing time for everybody, except for you, because strategically you made a decision. I pop on my Instagram and there's RJ standing next to uh, a surgeon. Big news, had the, had the surgery, fixed the knee. So while everyone else is trying to figure out when they're going racing, your, your schedule is pretty set right now. Yeah, man, it was, it was kind of a tough decision because like I was riding well, but I was kind of riding in a lot of pain. Um, but I knew, you know, Supercross was no issue. Um, you know, I'd be fine getting through it. And it's kind of up in the air about what to do with outdoors. And um, I, cause I haven't rode outdoors since, heck, the first day I got on a Husqvarna. So was really unsure on how great the knee was going to feel. Um, and, you know, I wish I kind of would have made the decision a little bit faster, but I didn't know until I rode outdoors. So uh, I believe it was two weeks after Indy got canceled. Um, you know, I rode outdoors on a Tuesday. And, uh, like, you know, I rode fine, felt, felt decent. But, dude, the, you know, hits I was taking on my knee, it was, man, pretty uh, obvious that, you know, outdoors wasn't going to be great for it. So – literally right away we had a meeting right after that and uh kind of all of us agreed it's like look you know now's the time at, at the point though we didn't really know necessarily I mean we still don't know but we know we have more time than what we actually did uh, so yeah I you know made some calls and uh dude honestly the hardest part was finding a surgeon that will actually do my surgery because of what's going on right now so my first three was pretty much no you know they couldn't do it I had one guy in California that could do it, um, but it was more of a risk flying out there to get it done than it was to actually get it done. Um, and then sure enough, uh, you know, I ran into the Vanderbilt uh, Health and uh, Dr. Bowman up there said, you know, he made the right phone calls, talked to the right people and, uh, you know, he can make it happen. So that was on, he called me on a Saturday. Um, Styles Robertson and I hopped in the truck Sunday morning, drove up, Monday checked up, Tuesday surgery. Wow, quick. And then timing wise, where do you think that leaves you as far as being on the bike? And I mean, there's steps, obviously, but bike and then racing. Is that I mean, when do you think that's possible? Uh, I mean, honestly, the whole plan was super cost. Like we're not necessarily focused on outdoors. You know, maybe if it keeps getting pushed back, um, you know, it's a possibility. I'm super far ahead in the stages right now. Like five days out, I was already cycling six days. You know, I was already spending on the bike. Um, you know, I'm walking around, getting around pretty well uh there's just a lot of therapy and you know who knows take it day by day uh, i've got the right people and dude honestly we're in quarantine right now so i have nothing to do so i spend time with my daughter and pretty much do therapy and that's it so i can literally just focus on getting my knee back in shape um and you know i'll be ready for super cost no doubt but who knows you might see me earlier than that nice shane uh this is a obviously a weird time for everybody guys are training some riding a little bit their schedules are all kind of adjusted but from what I've seen of you on Instagram, you've been putting the miles in on the, uh, on the bike and you look ultra competitive. You look like you're, <laughs> like you're pushing harder than ever. Are, are you, are you backed off at all? Or is that really what's going on? Just cranking it wide open because on Instagram, you look like you're sweating pretty good. Uh, I'm definitely competitive at just about anything I do. Anything I know how to do, I'm competitive, but it's, uh, it is, really weird right now mentally just with everything going on it's like okay we we know Indy's canceled we know the next few races are canceled so 
it was really like uh, Thursday night when we got back from uh, flying to Indy. It was like Friday we had completely off um, because our we were just worn out from having a 14-hour travel day. Uh, then the weekend, it was like, okay, let's just kind of cruise this weekend. And then the next week, I didn't even have a, a bike to ride outdoors with because we weren't, we wasn't planning on riding outdoors. So, uh, I just rode my 450 a couple times. And since then, it's like the schedule's changed a little bit or the schedule has continued to change. So I feel like we're still in the, the state of like, kind of turning back the throttle a little bit just because it's it's kind of progressively gotten worse as to what we thought it was going to be just like RJ said like they didn't think they were going to have much time but now it's like okay well now we realize things are actually going a lot slower than we thought so we're we're kind of in like a, a month training block right now which we decided to do right away because we we had two months before the first outdoor. So it's like, okay, let's do that. And we have the rest of this week. Well, really tomorrow is our last uh, hard day. And then next week is a recovery week. And so that's kind of the next time we reassess and there's supposed to be some more schedules coming out. So it's uh, mentally, it's a weird time because originally it's like, all right, well, let's just get ready for outdoors. But now it's like, okay, how much, longer can we keep this pace going knowing that there's not a a set goal in mind it's like I guess when when are we gonna I guess figure something out not only just us as a team but as an industry as a country and and the world so it's definitely weird right now and still don't really know what to think about it honestly to follow up on that, you talk about maybe having a week off to, you know, a recovery week, whatever. Seems kind of weird, though, that you can't get out and, like, go do fun things. It's like you take a week off, but you're mostly going to be in, indoors. So um, you already showed me your office. Looks a little unorganized. Mm -hmm. Are we going to use next week to maybe clean that up a little bit? Or, or I mean, what's the yeah. plan for an off week when you can't go out and be off? Well, that's, that's kind of the biggest thing. Uh, my wife and I are actually going out to Havasu with a few of our friends that have a house out there this weekend. So we kind of had to fit that in with the recovery week, which is going to be nice because we've seriously just went to the grocery store and it's definitely been weighing on us. Like it's, it's a weird time. I mean, we're in a 700 square foot apartment, so it's either the living room or the bedroom. <laughs> and it's like if we do calls like this or Joy does like a, a women's Bible study, I do like a guy's Bible study. And so it's like we kind of take our pick. Do you want to be in the living room? You want to be in the bedroom? So it's we don't really have much, much room to move around in here. Hence my office on the, the dining room table. But it's uh, that's kind of the, the hardest part is we have to stay inside and we're very limited on the amount of things that we can do. So I am currently working on cleaning up my office. I've been working on my 3D printer, trying to get it ready to put in a cabinet where it can still work. So it's uh, really just trying to do little things and do them slowly so that I don't run out of things to do during this time. Right, don't do it all in one day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey Chase, so it's your situation, to me, uh, it's got to be difficult. You're supposed to be transitioning onto a 450 for the summer. I mean, and now with the schedule, the way it's kind of looking, where it's looking like you would be transitioning and then have to go back. I mean, you, you, you've you really been given a, a thrown a curveball here. I mean, how, how are you, how you going to process that and how are you going to approach that knowing that you're going to probably have to be bouncing around a little bit? Yeah, um, as soon as I heard like the kind of like tentative schedule, I was kind of questioning a little bit. But um, for me, I'm just I've been riding the 450 here lately and um, getting some seat time on that. I really have uh, a home on the 250, so I'm not too worried about going back to it. I just uh, need to get seat time on the 450 and um, yeah, get ready to 
I think more we're racing in outdoors, but um, yeah, I think for Supercross coming, if it does come after outdoors, I think I'll take maybe a couple of the last outdoor rounds off and um, get back on the 250 because obviously priority is to win the 250 championship. So um, that's kind of where our mindset's at. And uh, that's kind of where I'm, my goal is towards, I just want to, this summer, I think I just want to get out there and kind of uh, learn and obviously grow as much as I possibly can. But yeah, our mindset is to go out there and win the 250 championship. So I'm going to probably get back on the 250 earlier than the outdoors is probably before it ends. So um, yeah, I'll probably just get back on the 250, get back um, riding from Supercross. So it's still up in the air. We, uh, none of us really know what's going to happen, which is, it's kind of hard to train for. Like, I don't really know, like when we're racing outdoors, I don't know. I just started another uh, like boot camp kind of uh, training block right now. Um, try to build a little bit because we don't really know when we're going racing tentatively June 13th but um, yeah so we'll just uh, have to wait and see but yeah right now it's kind of uh, weird not really knowing what I'm training for so so typically the off season you start prepping for Supercross October but November December is when you're really buckling down and then we race in the winter and into the spring so weather wise you guys you 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 know like what the weather is typically like for Supercross season with the Supercross potentially coming back in the fall and having to start doing that prep late summer, I mean, it's, that's completely different, right? Just putting in laps at the test track. It, RJ, if you're in Florida or Chase, you kind of go back and forth. Shane, I know you're mostly West Coast now, but it's hot in August and September. <laughs> and riding Supercross that time of year, that's not normal. So is, have you given any thought to just the prep that's going to be needed to be done in those hot months, or I would say that hot month, right, before we get going to racing? And then depending on where the racing goes down to, it's, completely uh i think it's gonna be a factor for sure um, yeah it's uh oh, okay. go ahead chase uh for me i i was thinking i'm like i hope they put a dome up here in florida because it's gonna be miserable riding supercross it's gonna be 95 to 100 degrees and humid i think honestly like september is almost one of the worst months here so for heat for heat at least so hopefully we get something figured out we're gonna need air conditioning uh, stadium hopefully but um yeah it's going to be interesting for sure and rj you too based on your timeline if you're coming back you're going to be getting on a supercross track in a pretty humid time of year yeah honestly i think us here in florida we're not gonna i mean for myself i'm really not going to struggle with the heat i think it's going to be more the rain and the weather during that time i mean dude it rains every day here in florida um you know around those months and supercross track doesn't take you know water as well as the outdoor tracks do um, so I feel like kind of a lot of days are going to be hit or miss with that. Uh, but I feel like a positive for myself coming in is I'm not going to, as of now, I'm not going to be on outdoors. Like it's literally going to be strictly super cross when I get back on the bike. So I don't necessarily think it's going to affect too much. Um, and then of course, California, you know, dries could be, um, you know, I probably struggle more with that than I would in the humidity. And Shane, those SoCal test tracks are already dry, even in December and January, September, dry really dry yeah yeah it's uh well the thing is like out here normally it's it's hot when we would get ready for vegas it's like all right it's it's starting to get hot like the 15 minute motos feel like twice as hard as they did when it was like cold so it's uh it's weird and right now it's it's not bad because we have been getting a lot of rain but like rj said uh Florida and the East Coast, they get a lot of rain during that time. Well, California, we won't, we may not get any more rain this year. So right. it's, it's, yeah, it, it's really hard to, hard to tell. I mean, if, if we would maybe try and go somewhere, or go to private tracks more. I mean, I know that we can, uh, we have our own private test tracks, but I mean, the, the dirts and stuff there compared to some that are a little farther north or a little farther east, uh, that could really make a big difference just uh, because of the weather. So, yeah, it's really, it's really hard to tell right now. But going forward, there's going to be some, some challenges that probably none of us have ever faced, especially during Supercross. Um. So, guys, obviously, with this being somewhat of a, a quarantine time, you I guess you'd call it like an extended off season. How y'all been on the diet? Uh, I asked the West Coast guys the same thing, and they kind of 
they kind of danced and then they finally started opening up a little bit and they, they're doing a little cheating on the diet. How about you guys? You've been all right, Chase, I'll start with you. Uh, for me, I, uh, I was riding and training like a little bit after, um, in Indianapolis and we didn't really know, it wasn't really known when, how soon we we're going to get back to racing until I think a couple weeks after. So I was still training normally, eating normally. And then once we found out, I kind of went off a little bit of a deep end. And uh, I started riding again on Monday and my sag was like super low. And my dad's like, what have you been eating? I'm like, uh, I don't know. So uh, yeah, I was definitely cheating a little bit, but yeah, I got to get back down to my, my uh, fighting weight a little bit. I'm, I'm a heavier person anyway, so I can't be cheating too much. But if you're moving up, if your next move is to move up, dude, you can gain 5'10", 15". Yeah, I know, but then going back down to 250, I'm going to have to lose those 5 to 10 pounds again, so I'd rather yeah. just stay where I'm at until I'm permanently on a 450. Right. Shane, what about you? Uh, what's the, what's the, <laughs> the go-to uh, for cheating on the diet during the quarantine? Um, I actually, my diet hasn't really changed at all. Uh, I mean, last night I ate a cinnamon roll, but as far as, like, my meals, they haven't really changed. Uh, we work with a nutritionist who makes our meals for us that uh, are tuned to the specific day of training that we had. So uh, we have a we have different breakfasts for different training loads, different dinners for different days, and so uh, that's kind of been the same for me uh, really since I got on the team. But uh, I I love getting a, a good burger from place called bushfire I don't, it's local here in socal but uh they make probably one of the best burgers and so maybe every other week or so joy and i'll go out there and get some burgers but for the most part that's that's our our big big cheat right now and rj you're uh you're home you're, you're doing the dad thing the recovery <laughs> thing i i can't imagine you've been that strict on the diet uh, i mean yeah, the week after surgery was a bit rough. Uh, <laughs> I Brewster's, Brewster's Ice Cream Shack has some uh, cookie craze. Yeah, I probably had that five times that week, but uh, <laughs> I didn't feel so great after that. So uh, I had to drop back down. Uh, I was in the gym a little bit this week, and I knew I had to hop on the scale. So I'm kind of laid it back down a little bit. Uh, but I've still got a while before I go racing. So we'll be good. Uh, we'll do a little, little... swelling in your knees. Yeah, yeah, no. the cookie craze, dude. You guys yeah. have unreal. Hey, so uh, let's play a little game. I asked the West Coast guys. They all finally admitted a little bit of their cheat diet. I want to see if you guys can figure out what they said. I had Dylan, Austin, and Justin. One of them said Chipotle is their cheat. One of them said Dr. Pepper, and one of them said wine. Shane, I'll start with Dylan. you. Who, 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 said, who said what? Dylan said wine. I know that. <laughs> um i'm gonna so wait, who, so who's it? sneaking the dr peppers then um i'm gonna say austin uh because i know justin he's on the same meal plan so <laughs> yeah that's that's what i'm gonna have to go with all right well you got it right so sorry rj and chase he already right. he's three for three he nailed it but yeah dylan says he broke out a couple of bottles of wine during the break a little bit and uh, Austin actually had a Dr. Pepper with him. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, so um, the 250 West guys got a chance to talk to them a little bit about you guys. Um, again, I, I would assume the, the hope is, is to get you guys still together with some East-West um, in this, um, you know, abbreviated schedule that we're going to be putting together hopefully in the fall. What did you think of the West Coast guys just getting a chance to watch them the first six rounds uh, and seeing their battles develop? They all three got wins. They kind of – they even mentioned that they all had really bad ones where you guys didn't really have that throwaway all the way yet. And, RJ, your situation is different because where you're at now in the points and everything. But, uh, Shane, Chase, you two were really consistent to start things out, and um, that's what they kind of recognized from you guys was it was a consistent start. What did you notice from them? Just watching those first six rounds, and Chase, I'll start with you. Uh, for me, I kind of, I kind of knew Dylan was going to be super good um, coming into this year after winning last year. I think winning a championship just really boosts your confidence, and he was already super good. So I knew him coming in was going to be, I think, the guy to beat. 
And then uh, I think Austin obviously started out a little rougher, but I think he started getting better and better as he kept racing. And um, yeah, so I mean, I kind of expected kind of where they were at, but Justin actually really surprised me at Anaheim one. Like he came out on road like super, super good. And like I knew he was a good super cross rider, but um, I was super surprised how good he, good he rode and all season. He had the red play for, I think, five, uh, I don't know how many rounds, but he had the red play for a while. And um, yeah, he really improved. I think from obviously us last year to this year. So I was really surprised with him and just, uh, I kind of expected where Dylan was at and he uh, obviously was riding really well. So hopefully we get to squeeze in some of those East West shootouts because I obviously want to race those guys as well. And Shane, uh, Justin mentioned that you two being on the same program prepped a lot together and he said it was back and forth. You guys were battling it out in the prep. So he, he kind of had an understanding of where you guys all would be because he was riding with you a lot, but uh, were you surprised with him as well, just being training with him so tight and seeing him have that success early in that West Coast? Um, not really. Uh, like you said, we uh, we spent a lot of time together and still do. Um, I think Dylan, he, like Chase said, he's the defending champ. He really uh, rides well. And I think coming into this year with uh, uh, the number one plate and just mainly the experience, I knew Dylan – was in a really good position to do it again. Um, but with Justin, I didn't, it didn't surprise me when he came out and won a one, like, I mean, we've went back and forth a lot, but uh, the consistency of his season, really Justin's biggest thing is, is just experience compared to uh, Dylan. I mean, Dylan's been over here for a couple of years and, and Justin last year was pretty much his first year uh, of racing Supercross. So it's uh, Justin just likes the experience. And I think with time and more experience, he's going to, he's going to get a lot better, even though he's already really fast. And same with Austin. I, I can't really say much about like his training or, or what he does like away from the races, but just the, the years that he's had the last couple of years, he's one that's kind of missed out on a lot of experience. And the same with him, like these next couple of years, I think he's really going to uh, blossom as well, just because of the, the experience that it takes to kind of ride at that level, especially throughout the season now. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's playing out about how it should right now uh, for those guys, just based off of experience and based off of uh, longevity of the season. And RJ, for you, you had a chance. You rode the West last year. So you rode with Dylan. Um, you rode with Shane. Um, now this year, you go and you're riding with Chase, Austin, and Justin. You didn't ride with last year or this year. So those two riders, you, had, you didn't even really – you haven't had a chance to race with them in a while. Uh, what did you think of just the starts of their season? Um, and like Shane said, both of them having a little bit less experience, but also put, having some good rides this year to start things out. Yeah, I mean, they both kind of hit it spot on. Um, I mean, you knew Dylan was going to be good from the beginning. Um, you know, maybe I, I felt like he might have been a little bit more uh, consistent than what he has been. Um, like you said, you know, they had all kind of had one pretty bad race, uh, which is kind of expected. And, you know, I don't think any of us have really had one yet. Uh, but, I mean, all together, you know, all three, even, I mean, the guys behind them, there's a couple guys that are going to, you know, throw it in. And uh, with Jet, you know, coming back also, he's been, I mean, there's so much excitement around him. Like, that was fun to watch. So, uh, no, I think it'll shake up a lot once, you know, the East West come together. And, you know, hopefully we can, you know, tighten the point series up on the East Coast. Um, you know, I'm not too sure what it is on the West, but I know those three guys still, you know, all have an option uh, or a shot at it. So, you know, hopefully once we get, you know, seven rounds in, eight rounds in, that, you know, us three still have a, you know, shot at it. You know, uh Ralph and Ricky and Will, they're always starting to trying to start drama between you guys. I don't do that at all. Zero. Um, so I'll just ask this on their behalf. But RJ, Chase, you guys, you guys cool or I'm good? I figured um, that was coming up this. I figured that was coming up sometime in this press conference. Hey, we only we only live a couple miles away. I'm still waiting for the dinner invite. Are you guys doing better than Martin Davlos and Justin Barsha are doing? Nah, I mean, dude, I used to live with Chase, so yeah. I mean, however much crap there used to be, like, whatever, it's we're gone racing. I mean, he'll probably take me out again. I'll probably take him out again by the time this career is over. So just kind of get I, it. I got to throw this in. At one of the press conferences, someone asked you two about that. 
Shane, you were smiling a lot through the entire conversation, and I'm watching your face, and you were really giggly and giddy about them two having to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, well, it's it's just funny, I guess, kind of to be put on the spot and to see like if if both sides line up, I guess. It's uh, I mean, <laughs> once everybody's there and everybody like, especially the people are up there on the stage together and just getting to hear eat both sides of it, kind of where their headspace was like going through it. It's just, it's just funny because I know both of them and yeah, it's just, I mean, yeah, sometimes things happen in racing, but it's uh, you even see it in the 450 class, like with Anderson and Brayton, like Anderson got cleaned out big time by somebody who you don't really expect to do anything, but but JB's not going to take that. So it's uh, it's just cool to see people, like, hit somebody, then they'll give it back. But it's, like, it's good, clean racing after that that really makes it worthwhile. And knowing that Chase and RJ don't hate each other with a passion, it's like, oh, then then it's it's laughable. But if it's not, then it's like, all right, this, these guys need to figure something out. Is it also laughable when you three are top three in points and the other two guys are rubbing and racing and you're not <laughs> having to? <laughs> yeah, honestly, Atlanta, like, kind of when we were talking about, like, a, the bad race, like, honestly, Atlanta was, like, my low point. Like, I was – I struggled so bad in the main. And when RJ and Chase were, were like, going at it, I was, like – I was, like, ready to, to make that push and get them both and like leave. But I was, I was struggling so bad. Like I couldn't go anywhere. And when Chase, uh, I think, so I passed, I passed Chase first and I was like, all right, let's keep going. But I, I really couldn't go any faster. And so then Chase got me back. And then when they started going at it, it was like, just, just do something like give me a little <laughs> advantage. But sure enough, I couldn't do anything even after they went back and forth. Uh, I just thought that was funny, and yeah, I had to ask that on behalf of the rest of the TV crew, of course, because I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't do that. I don't ask those kinds of things. That's not what I do. So, uh, Chase, right. what's that? What? what was that, Chase? I said it's all right. Oh, okay, it's, uh, it's all right. <laughs> Chase, uh, last year you talked a lot about uh, with me or with everybody, but with me on, in private, how last year you got the championship, but it wasn't. The necessary the way that you would want to win a title and this year was gonna it mean it meant a lot more for you to try to get it again but do it a different way um you got the season cut kind of short there but were you happy with the first four was it kind of progressing the way you wanted it to and especially based off what how you felt about last year's title yeah i mean for me it was it started off pretty well i, I showed up to tampa and then shane gets the whole shot and was like gone i'm like all right this cannot happen two years in a row like, i'm not going through this again so Winning in Dallas uh, was meant a lot to me. And then um, obviously doing it again in Atlanta, I was like, yeah, this is kind of like what I wanted. And I, I really put a lot of effort into this year. And just, I mean, obviously last year I won, but like I said, I wasn't the way I wanted to do it. And this year I put a lot of focus on trying to go out there and be as dominant as I can because this is my last shot at it. And I just feel like from this, from last year to this year, just the experience, like Shane said, like you learn so much in a year. And then being able to go a whole off season and put it back into a, another year of racing, I think has helped me a lot. And just finding that confidence, I think, was a big thing for me. So, yeah, I'm overall just happy with it. I went, I think, one or two, one, one, two. So, um, yeah, I was pretty happy with that, obviously. And uh, it got cut short. I was on a pretty good roll. But I think uh, when we start up again, I, I think I can get it back. So, um, looking forward to get back racing. But, yeah, I'm just, uh, overall just happy with how it started. And, overall happy with my starts too it's been it's been tough last year I didn't get the greatest starts and this year I really feel like I focused a lot on it and um made them a lot better so hopefully you can keep that going and RJ for you you switched teams switched bikes you had the knee injury so you came in I I, I know that you had a lot of you know you were fired up to get going but you also had a lot of changes that weren't you know ideal are you happy with the way you were able to kind of progress in those first couple rounds and then learning what you learned there and now having the time to heal up? Does that give you a, a, like a boost of confidence for when we do come back? Yeah, I think so. I mean, honestly, man, though, week before Indy was 
by, I mean, I, it's easy to say now it's been a good racing, but by far the best week I've had, I mean, riding on Supercross. Uh, but even coming into the season, um, you know, at Tampa, I knew my knee was going to be, uh, have a little bit of effect, but not really. And uh, I rode well in Tampa. I just kind of threw it away with two laps to go. I mean, I feel like I should have had a podium there, which kind of would have been uh, a lot better to start the season off than with a sixth. Um, and then, of course, you know, I was pretty fired up during the week. The team expected a lot from me and wasn't there, you know, in Tampa. And, uh, you know, to back it up with a podium and then another podium at Atlanta. Um, and, dude, Atlanta, my heat race, I whole shot it and went to third. Like, it was terrible. Like, I didn't even um, really ride well. But it was all just kind of learning. Like, dude, we changed my bike every weekend. Like, we were on something new. Um, you know, I didn't have an off season to test. So we were kind of testing that those first couple of rounds. And I felt like I really had a good setting. Uh, kind of stole it a little bit from Zacco. Um, and then, you know, coming into Daytona, dude, we did not have a good bike at Daytona. I mean, for how different the track was compared to what, you know, the first three were. Um, so just kind of trying to get through it. And then of course, you know, right off the bat, I had a massive first turn pile up, which was on the left side, left knee, everything. So I was already kind of beat up a little bit. Um, and still just kind of salvage what I could for the, uh, main, but I feel like I'm in a good spot. You know, the team's awesome. And, um, you know, getting this knee fixed, I feel like that's going to be huge. Not that it affected me really those first three rounds, um, or four rounds. I feel like I rode well, uh, but just having that confidence of knowing, you know, I have something that if I plan it, it's not going to give out on me or something like that. Um, will be much better once we come back into, you know, finish the season off. All right, guys, I'll ask you one more question. Um, just from talking to friends and fans and people that are, love this sport, everybody's pretty antsy to see you guys racing again. And obviously you guys have your lives, you prepare, you battle, you race, but for the fans, like, uh, dude, they and, and myself live for Saturday nights. Like it's like what we do and it's, this is a hard period, but everybody I think is fired up to have you guys back when you're back. And I guess my last question would be like, what do you say just to the fans out there to, you know, let them know that, you know, this is, this is going to be okay. Like I said, the West coast guys, they think this, it'll be worth the wait is kind of what they kind of said. Is that the same for you? And what is, I guess your message to the fans during this break, knowing that uh racing's coming. Shane. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I would just say that we're, we're, we're all in it together. I mean, our season, well, for, for the year, our season starts in Supercross the beginning of January and then it ends in September at the end of outdoors. So it's like we, we train our butts off during the weeks between those events, but also during the off season to, to be the best at the races when everybody's there. And so it's, uh, it's tough right now because as much as the fans want to be at the races, like that's, what we work for that's what we train for that's why we do what we do is to go to the races and to to do what we practice so it's it's hard right now as an athlete because i mean we want to be there maybe if not more than the fans want to be there so that's that's the hard part but really just letting people know like hey we're we're going to be ready when the time comes but for now, like we're still all in this together. Chase. Yeah. I mean, like Shane said, it's, uh, it's tough for us, obviously not being able to race. We put a lot of time and effort into being 100% ready for the first round, but I think this off time is going to give us another chance to kind of reset. Um, we only did four races, but train again and get better than what we even were at the first round for, uh, our, our season. So, I think coming into whatever race is first, I think it's going to be like a whole new season opener. It's going to be like two, almost two seasons split or made into one. So I think it's going to be a lot of intensity and a lot of action. Obviously our season was pretty action packed, I think so far. So uh, yeah, I think just looking forward to better racing to come and uh, yeah, we all just got to get through this and I think we'll, uh, it'll be better racing come uh, September, I think when we start. So um, yeah, looking forward to that. I think it's going to be uh, pretty chaotic. So. RJ. Yeah, I mean, the same thing. We're uh, honestly, I feel like it's going to bring a lot more excitement into it. Um, some more storylines, uh, you know, of course, just with, you know, myself and the knee and, you know, just these guys going to race outdoors. I'm sure some things are going to happen, you know, from now till we get back to racing. 
um, you know, we're all excited to like, you know, we hate not going racing, especially when we're supposed to be, um, you know, off season's hard enough. Uh, and now, you know, we weren't even prepared for this. We can't really go do anything. So we're just stuck at our house thinking about going racing and man, we can't right now. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, just a lot of excitement. Um, heck I'm, I can't wait to get back on the bike and, you know, get back to racing. Yeah, me too. Dude. I, I can't wait to get back to, um, I want to thank you guys for coming on for sure. This is trying times. And uh, when we started talking about the idea of doing this, I was excited to talk to you guys and see how everyone's doing. I'm glad you guys are staying safe, having fun and cheating on the diet a little bit when you can. I, RJ, no more ice cream. Nah, I'm and, all. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks guys again. I appreciate you coming on for this, uh, this virtual press conference and look forward to seeing you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks, Dan.